Welcome everybody to Determining Which QuickBooks is Right for My Client. I'm very glad to have you be joining us today. You can download the slides from this webinar today at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash determine underscore QBO. You don't see the underscore on here, but between determine and QBO there is an underscore. So bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash determine QBO. We've also posted a link in the chat window for those of you that are joining us live today. My name is Michelle Long. I am a CPA and the owner of Long for Success. I am an advanced certified pro advisor in both the desktop and QuickBooks online because now there's an advanced certification for that as well. I'm happy to say I'm an international trainer for Intuit. I've had the privilege of teaching accountants and bookkeepers how to use QuickBooks and QuickBooks Online literally across the U.S., across Canada. I got to go to London and Australia, and it's just been fabulous. I'm the author of five different books, including the QuickBooks practice set. We have one for desktop and one for online. If you want to check those out, those are all available on Amazon. I'm also co-host of QB Power Hour and Ultimate Accounting VCon. Love to have you join us for those. If you want to learn more about QuickBooks, managing your practice, both of those are great resources. Um, also the LinkedIn group, if you have questions or you want to ask a specific question, you know, my client has XYZ situation. Can they do this in you know, QuickBooks Online? Can they do this in desktop? It's a great resource when you have questions. So just go to LinkedIn and search for QuickBooks group and you should find it out there. Um, for the CPE, those of you who are certified public accountants or certified bookkeepers, you may need CPE credit, continuing education credit. You have to stay on this webinar for the entire webinar. If you're watching the recording, I'm sorry you're not eligible for it. You can get one hour CPE for today's webinar. During the first half of the webinar sometime, I'm going to give you a CPE keyword. You should make note of that. Write it down for later. Because towards the end of the webinar somewhere, I'm going to give you a poll question, and you're going to be prompted to enter that keyword in that poll question. That's how you're going to get your CPE credit, is attend live and then answer the poll question with the CPE keyword somewhere towards the end of the webinar. Then you'll get your CPE certificate emailed to you, but it takes about three weeks. So make sure that you put a, like, a reminder on your calendar for three weeks from today. And make sure you also double check your spam folder and then keep that copy for your records. So what we're going to be covering today is we're going to help you determine the needs of the client because that's what it's all based on. Which one is right depends on the needs of your client. I'm going to help you understand the different versions of QuickBooks Online as well as how QuickBooks Online is different from the desktop because sometimes QuickBooks Online may not be the right answer for your client at this time. We'll help you also discover some apps that are available and identify again when QuickBooks Online may not be the right answer for your client. So first of all, let's talk about QBOA versus QuickBooks Online. I assume most of you are accounting professionals in here, whether you're an accountant or a bookkeeper or a tax professional. So we use QBOA, QuickBooks Online Accountant. Here's a picture of the new QBOA where we have a client dashboard for working with our clients. So that's what we are using. We're going to log into office.intuit.com to get into QBOA. But our clients will be using QuickBooks Online. We use QBOA to give us some accountant tools that are available to us so that we can do things like reclassify transactions, undo the bank reconciliation, things like that. Our clients log in through QuickBooks Online. And there's three different versions that we're going to talk about, some of the differences and things like that. They, use, they can have either Simple Start, Essentials, or Plus. So we are logging into QBOA. We're accessing the same data and sharing the data with our client, and they're using either Simple Start, Essentials, or Plus. So we're going to want to help identify which one would be right for them. One of the first things to consider for your clients is how many users do they need. With Simple Start, it comes with one user for the client plus two accountant users. Each one of these, you'll notice, includes two accountant users. So perhaps you set up the bookkeeping firm and you set up the tax firm, or the bookkeeper and the tax accountant, or you know maybe you're you've got you know different firms that are working with this client. So each one of these includes two accountants users. So then Essentials will give you three regular users plus the two accountants. Plus will give you five regular users. You got the two accountants users 
and you have unlimited reports only and unlimited time tracking. So think about this. If your client has 10 employees, maybe you know most of them don't need access to QuickBooks, but they need to enter their time. With the Plus version, you can have unlimited time tracking. Maybe your client is a nonprofit organization, and the board of directors wants to have access to the reports. With the Plus version, you have unlimited reports only users, um, so that you can um, get in there and, and do that stuff and have access to those. Um, so Plus really gives you capabilities for a, access to a lot of different things. Okay, I see Katie. Hi, Katie. Katie Peterson just typed in here, and she said. Once Gen 3 is rolled out, there will be no office.intuit.com. It will all be qbo.intuit.com to access. Thank you, Katie, for posting that. I appreciate that clarification. Um, OK, so now the next thing that we need to do is a needs assessment for our client. Because it's our job as accounting professionals to help the client determine which QuickBooks is right for them. So the accounting system is, is where you've got to take into consideration all these different aspects of the client's business. Their sales and accounts receivable, how do they do their purchases and payables, operations, human resources aspect, the financial aspect as far as reporting and tax purposes and KPIs or key performance in the integrators, uh, indicators. KPI, Key Performance Indicators. Sorry about that. Looking at the numbers. And then we also have the admin and IT aspect of things. So we need to kind of talk with our client and ask them, how do they operate? What are their needs in these individual areas? Because that will impact the accounting system for them. And in some situations, they may have some specialized needs where they will want a third-party app to help them with something along those lines. So first of all, as you're talking with the client to determine the needs, ask them about their sales and accounts receivable. How are they operating? Are they a retail store? Do they have an e-commerce website? Do they need to do automatic invoicing? Let's say, for example, you've got a, oh, a, a daycare center, and they want to be able to do um, weekly tuition and send that invoice out for the weekly fees to each of the parents. Or maybe it's a gym, a fitness center, and they have monthly membership. Do you want to be able to set up the invoices and automate it so that they will automatically be emailed out to the customers every month? You can do that with some versions of QBO, but you can't do it with all versions. So if that's important for your client, you need to know that, hey, Simple Start's not going to work for them because they want to do the automated invoices. Um, so this is where doing the needs assessment helps you to identify which QuickBooks is going to be right for them. Now, when it comes to progress invoicing, that might be one of those situations where they want to use the desktop. Progress invoicing is not really available in QBO. There are some workarounds that some people have come up with. Many of the small business owners and many of the clients will kind of have said that that's too cumbersome or that that doesn't meet their needs because you can't really do it on a percentage basis the same way that you can do progress invoicing with the desktop version. So that's something where you really need to assess their needs. Will some kind of workaround work for them? Are they dedicated enough to doing that workaround and doing it correctly? Or do they really need the full, true progress invoicing? If that's the case, they may need QB Desktop. Same thing when it comes to price levels. If they don't have too many, you may be able to set up some additional items or services in QuickBooks Online. But if they truly need the price level feature, it's not available in QuickBooks Desktop, or I'm sorry, in QuickBooks Online. It is in the desktop. So this is some examples of where you have to talk to the client and determine what their needs are, what's critical for their business. Because if you put them in QBO and it doesn't meet their needs, then they're going to be frustrated, and so are you. Also, you might want to talk to them about accepting payments. You know, do they want to accept payments in the field as well as their sales tax needs? Um, so these are some things to talk to them about in the sales and receivable side. Then you also need to talk to them around the whole purchasing and accounts payable aspect. Do they want to enter bills and pay bills and track accounts payable? Maybe they don't. Maybe they're happy just being able to, to enter the expenses and the checks as they have them. But if they want accounts payable, they would need to have essentials or plus. What about job costing? Do they just need to do basic job costing? Let's say it's a it, maybe your client is a 
a company that's a catering company. And as they spend money on the food costs and things like that, they want to allocate that to the job so that they can see what their income and their expenses were for that job. Or in QuickBooks Online, it's called a sub-customer. QuickBooks Online can do that. If you've got the Plus Edition, you could do some basic job costing. If it's more robust, like a construction contractor, then maybe QBO is not going to meet their needs because it's more basic job costing in QBO, and in the desktop you've got the more robust job costing, particularly if they want to allocate labor to the jobs. There's no easy way to do that in QBO right now. So these are some things that you've got to kind of think about, or you may need to look for a third-party app who can help to meet some of these needs. Then also, what about the approval processes for accounts payable? Do they want to be able to enter the bills and then allow other people to review and approve the bills? Do they want to do this online instead of like in their office and sending them around to different people? If they want to do the online approval processes, they might want a third-party app for that, something like bill.com. So this is where you're talking with the client about how do you operate what are your needs? And we do this by asking the clients questions and kind of talking. How do you, you know, can you tell me how would you do this and how would you do that? Talk to them about their inventory needs. Do they need perpetual inventory or a periodic inventory system? And by periodic, what I mean is, let's say, for example, your client bakes cupcakes. They have a cupcake bakery, right? There's a lot of those these days. Um, so maybe they got a cupcake shop. I would not recommend they try to track their inventory in QuickBooks. If you've got food service or anything dealing with food and ingredients and all that, QBO by itself, is, or even QuickBooks Desktop by itself, is not going to be able to track that kind of inventory. You would need a specialized industry application or system to do some of that. In those cases, you might use a periodic inventory system. As they purchase inventory, they just put it directly to the cost of goods sold, and periodically they actually take a physical inventory and adjust to actual, usually at year end. Versus a perpetual inventory system where they want to enter every quantity of inventory that they purchase and enter every quantity of invoice they sell. Now the client has to be committed to doing that because a lot of times they won't do that right um, and they'll make a big mess of inventory. So you've got to talk to them about some of those things up front and then also talk to them about do they need groups or assemblies? Do they need to group several inventory items together? Let's say it's a sporting goods store and they're going to sell a baseball hat, a glove, and a mitt together as a package deal or something? Do they want to group those things together? You can do that in the desktop, but you can't in QuickBooks Online. You can't build assemblies in QuickBooks Online without a third-party app. There are some apps that will allow you to have those features and functionalities. Now, another big consideration is QuickBooks Desktop is average cost, so QuickBooks Online is a FIFO basis. If you change from desktop to online, you've had a change in your accounting method. You have to notify the IRS when you change your accounting method. So if you get a client that's converting from desktop to online and they have inventory, first of all, do not convert the file because it doesn't convert well at all. Um, but you still would need to, con if you're going to start a new file, um, then what you'd want to do is, is Make sure that you know that that is a change in the accounting method. Talk to the tax accountant about that um, because you're going to be converting from average cost to FIFO. Do they have multiple locations that they need to track? Do they need to scan in the UPC codes as they receive inventory? In some situations, they're going to need a third-party app. You can do inventory in QuickBooks Online. Um, you would need to make sure that it's kind of basic inventory. Okay, So those are some things to consider there. Also then, what about payroll? Do they want to do time tracking? Do they have multiple states? What about commissions? How complex are their commissions? You know, this is again where QuickBooks Online may meet their needs, QuickBooks Desktop may meet their needs, um, but if you've got multiple states, um, for example, I live in Kansas City and I'm on the Missouri side, um, there's a lot of people though that they'll work in both states. Like let's say you've got people that are out doing services, maybe they're doing lawn and landscape, and they're working in both states, Kansas and Missouri, on the same paycheck. And QuickBooks can't handle that multiple state payroll withholding, um, not even the desktop version. So there may be some situations where QuickBooks may not meet their needs. Again, 
you've got to go through and look at this. Now, most of the time, people don't have these kind of issues. It's not very common, but this is where you've got to investigate and talk to the client. Also then, what are their reporting requirements? The reports are different between the different versions. I'm not going to sit here and go through all these different reports with you. This is here more for you to kind of take a look at it to make sure you can kind of see what some of those different reports are. Now keep in mind, you can go in and you can modify and customize these reports. So there may not be the base report there, but you can do a customization to get it. Let's say, for example, your client wants to see a monthly profit loss. Well, that's not there out of the box, if you will, but it's very easy to customize that and get a monthly P&L form. There's not a three-year comparative balance sheet. Well, that's pretty easy to customize and get as well. So these are the base reports, but then you also can go in and do some customizing to get the reports that you might need. Then another thing, whoops, let's talk about the keyword. The CPE keyword is German Shepherd. Isn't that German Shepherd a pretty dog? He looks so cute, doesn't he? <laughs> okay, go ahead then and type in some questions if you have some questions. I've been talking quite a bit. Um, type your questions in there, but make sure also you write down the CPE keyword, German Shepherd. That is a German Shepherd dog. I have two dogs, but they are not a German Shepherd. So write down the CPE keyword, German Shepherd. I've said it about three or four times. <laughs> okay, Wendy wants to know, will this be recorded and available later? Yes, we are recording it. Hopefully there won't be any problems, and it will be posted later, and you should get an email with that link. Okay, any other questions? Go ahead and type your questions in that question box as they come up. Um, because we've got a little bit smaller group today, it's a lot easier for me to answer your questions. Um, so go ahead and type those questions in there, and I will take a look at those periodically and answer those for you. Okay, let's go ahead and move on then. Now, we talked a little bit about doing a needs assessment with your clients. Now let's talk a little bit about the pricing, because um, each one of those is a different price. There's, there's the standard retail prices, $12.95, $26.95, and $39.95. But keep in mind that as an accounting professional, we can sign up for wholesale pricing. What this does is it gives the clients or it gives us 50% off, so we'll get a 50% discount the lifetime of that subscription. You may see some ads that Intuit runs where it's 50% off. Well, it's for the first 12 months, and then after that, they go to the full retail price. If we sign up for wholesale pricing for our clients, we're getting that 50% discount for the life of that subscription. Um, so we can get, say, the plus version for 20 bucks a month for the life of the subscription. With wholesale pricing, you get one consolidated bill for all of your clients. So you have 10 clients, you'll get the bill that has 10 clients on it, and you're paying that. Then you can decide, are you going to charge that through to your client? Are you going to include that with your monthly fees, which most accounting professionals are doing these days? If it's 20 bucks a month, they're kind of building that into their fees that they're charging their client. And then essentially, you're providing your clients QuickBooks for free as part of your services. It's a great way to differentiate yourself. Um, one other thing to keep in mind, and so if you want to know more about wholesale pricing, if you just Google QuickBooks wholesale pricing, you'll find it. Or if you go to the Quickopedia, if you Google Quickopedia, you'll find it there too. And in the upper right corner under exclusive discounts, you should be able to find it in there as well. There's also some links in there. Let's say you don't want to sign up for wholesale pricing. There's some links under those exclusive discounts that you can share with your clients to get them a discount as well. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind is when you're setting up a new client or when you're getting a company started, start them at the lowest level and upgrade if and when you need to. For example, I just had a client I was working with this week, and he's wanting to get started. He's starting his consulting business. He may want to use automated invoicing later. He may want to do the... Um, billable expenses or reimbursable expenses. He may want to do those later, but he doesn't really need it right now. His business is really kind of small right now, and he's just getting started. So I told him, I said, you know what, let's start with essentials, okay? Because as your business grows and as you want to start using these new features, we can upgrade you to plus in two months from now, in six months from now, or 10 months from now. When you need it, we can upgrade you. On the other hand, if I had started him at the plus version, and then he says, gosh, you know, I really don't need this. Can we go back down to essentials? 
the answer is no, you can't really downgrade. Okay, at least not very easy. I don't know if you can call support and see if they can find a way, but it's not really very easy to downgrade back to essentials. So start at the lower level, and then you can move up a little bit. Okay, so Sita says, is QBO or QB desktop good for a hair salon business? I have a potential client um, with no form of accounting software. So Sita, there's some things that you need to ask that hair salon. Are they running a point of sale system? Will that point of sale system, do they want to integrate that with QuickBooks? Because right now, I think there's only one that will integrate with the new QBO, and I think it was called Revel. Um, so uh, that Revel point of sale system would integrate with QBO, but maybe they're using something else that already would integrate with QB Desktop. So you need to kind of check into that with them. With both QBO and QB Desktop, if they don't integrate from a point of sale system, they may just have a basic register. A lot of small businesses and small retailers just use a basic cash register. And then what you can do is you can get the Z tape from the register at the end of the day and get the totals from that and enter a daily sales summary. And you can do that with either QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks Online. Um, you could. Some people will create a spreadsheet for the 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 store to fill out every day, and then you might enter weekly or daily totals, kind of depending on how they're doing their deposits and all kinds of things. So there's really some things that you need to talk to the client about. How do we want to operate? Do you want to share that data file with them? Do you want to teach them how to enter the daily sales summary and let them enter that, and you take care of managing the downloaded transactions and reconciling the accounts? If you want to share the system, you definitely would want to use QuickBooks Online. Or do you just want them to send? You do everything. You might want to use QuickBooks Desktop. So you really kind of need to talk to them about what their needs are. Do they want to see reports? Do they want to access things? There's different things to talk to them about. And I see uh, Katie said, keep them out of their books. You pull the reports and you do it, keeps the books clean. And that's true sometimes, Katie, but sometimes the clients want access to their books. They want to be able to see their reports. They want to see how they're doing. Um, so it really depends on the client, the relationship you have with the client, and what their needs are. Um, so lots to consider there. See, the no quick and easy answer, was it? <laughs> um, but that gives you some things to think about and some things to talk to them about. OK. Um, Somebody said, how does the inventory handle the inventory in the back bar with product transfers? That's a good question, uh, Wendy. You'd want to talk to the salon about how are they going to handle their inventory. Because they have inventory that they're, well, I wouldn't call it inventory. They have inventory that they sell to their customers. Like at the front of the store, you'll see where you can buy hair products, you know, the shampoo, the conditioner, the frizz, you know, the gel, all these different things that you can buy. But then they also have supplies and raw, you know, kind of inventory that they use for their use when you come in to get your hair colored or whatever. Um, so you'd also have to talk to them about how they're tracking those things and stuff like that. Um, okay. So under Simple Start, let's talk about a few of these things, and then I'll get to some more of your questions. With all of the versions, so this starts with Simple Starts. This is true for all of them. You have the automatic bank feeds. And when I say bank feeds, that's bank and credit cards, where you get the transactions downloaded every evening. You can do estimates and invoices. Of course, you can record transactions and print checks. You can import your list from Excel, and you can convert from QuickBooks Desktop during the first 60 days. You can integrate with those third-party apps. Um, and you've got a few reports, but not too many. And again, one user and two accounts users. Then we move up to the Essentials version. And the Essentials version includes everything from Simple Start. Plus, now you can do that automatic invoicing, like we mentioned for the fitness center that wants to invoice people every month. You now have accounts pill excuse me, accounts payable. You've got the delayed billing, where maybe you've got a lawyer and they're working on some really big case, and they're entering their time all throughout the, the month, and they're entering it as a delayed charge. And then at the end of the month, you want to invoice for all of those delayed charges or those delayed billings. You can do that with online essentials. You've got a scorecard that will allow you to look at some industry trends. We can now set up some user permissions because we have three users now. And we have more reports because now we have our accounts payable reports and some other reports. Then we move up to the plus version. 
And with QBO Plus, this gives you the ability to do class and location tracking. Now remember, in the desktop version, you only have class tracking. But in QuickBooks Online, we have two tracking categories, by class and by location. You can have inventory that we already discussed. It's FIFO basic, or FIFO, the FIFO basis. It's the FIFO basis for inventory, and it's pretty basic inventory. You can't do the groups or assemblies. You do have the ability to do purchase orders. You can do 1099s with QuickBooks Online. You can do the billable expenses that I mentioned. So let's say um, the client that I had was an IT guy. And so let's say he goes and he buys a router for a particular customer and he wants to bill it through to them. Some people call it billable expenses or reimbursable expenses. You need the plus version to do that. You can see a report called Income by Customer that would show you your income and expenses by customer giving you the basic job costing in the plus version. You can now create budgets, and you can do budget by class, budget by location, budget by customer job. Um, you've got the ability to have multiple budgets in QBO. You've got over 65 reports, and here you can have, again, we mentioned the five standard users. You can go all the way up to 25 of these regular users. You contact into it. And it, let's say you need seven regular users, you can increase that and go all the way up to 25. And then you got the two accountants, unlimited reports, and time tracking users as well. Um, and Shelly says, Michelle, you can only use the reclassify on classes but not locations. Is that right? That's correct, Shelly. In QBOA, we have a tool that's called reclassify transactions. And we can reclassify the class or the account, if it's in the wrong account, we can change accounts. And we also can reclassify or assign a class, but not a location. That's one of the considerations where you're determining should we use classes or locations. That's one consideration. And there's a lot of other considerations. And Laura Redman talks about that. I believe it's module one or two in the QBO, A, or the QBO Advanced Certification. Um, that's covered pretty in depth as to when you'd want to use classes or locations in that advanced certification training material. So I'd encourage you to go check that out as well. And let me see here. We did have another question from Larry. He says, i got to scroll up just a little bit to see it. Sorry. Is there a list of examples of business types, or better yet, a list of Q&A from the initial assessment to help choose the version? Larry, no, there's not, um, because there's so many individual variations. You know, we talked about the hair salon. There's lots of different possibilities, even for a hair salon. So that's where it's important for us as accounting professionals to, I think we need to understand the different versions of QuickBooks, the different options that are available, you know, what is possible in these different versions, and then talk to the client about how they operate, what's the best way to operate for them. And we need to remember the KISS principle. Keep it simple, silly. And I don't like to say stupid, so keep it simple, silly. <laughs> keep it simple for them. Don't get too complex with a small business. As their business grows, as they get more employees, as they have you know, additional resources, then you can implement more complex accounting systems for them. But we want to keep it simple for them at first. And then as the business grows, their accounting system can grow right along with that business. Don't make it too complex for them right off the get-go or they're going to be frustrated and it's going to be challenging for them. Um, so those are some things uh, that can help a little bit. Shelly says she thinks this leader group has a needs assessment document. Shelly, if you've got a link that you could find that and want to share that, I think that would be fabulous, because um, I don't recall one. I did do a whole webinar um, on, on a needs assessment and talking to them. That's in my YouTube channel. It's one of the Appify the Processes webinar series. It was the one with Intuit, the first one of that series. And we covered the needs assessment for the whole hour, pretty much. Um, so if you wanted to listen to that, Larry, that might be a good resource. If the client you set you up as the regular user with admin per permissions, can they change you to an accountant? Wendy, no. What they're going to have to do, they're going to have to delete you as a regular user, because you can only have one your email address should only be in there one time, because I had this situation. I was having a hard time getting in as the, QB, as the accountant user. So I had them remove me as the accountant user and invite me as the regular user, because it wasn't working on the accountant side. And you can't have the same email address in there twice. 
So what I would recommend, Wendy, is if you've got the admin permissions, actually, you could invite yourself, but you'd have to use a different email address. So you may have to remove yourself first and then have them re-add you as the accountant user. Um, okay, Shelley says there's a QuickBooks client interview document request that you ask them to complete. Okay, so she's posted the link here. Let's put a little doohickey right there. Thank you, Shelley, for sharing that resource. And there's the link to it, so she found it. Very good. Okay, let me get back into a few slides, and then we will get back to more questions um, in a little bit. So let's talk more specifically about some of the features that are not available in the desktop version. So this is stuff that we can do in QBO that we cannot do in the desktop version. And I really love some of these things. First of all, I love the automated invoicing. We talked about this a little bit earlier, where if you've got, let's say, that fitness center, and they've got monthly membership dues, you can set it up, and you can see in the picture there, you can set up this recurring invoice and tell it to not only create the invoice, but automatically email the customers. You don't have to do anything, or your client doesn't have to do anything. You can be on vacation at some sunny destination sitting on the beach, and when that date comes along, like in this example, it's scheduled to be on the first day of the month, QuickBooks will automatically create and email your invoices for you. With the desktop version, you could memorize an invoice, but it wouldn't happen until you opened that QuickBooks file. So if you're on vacation somewhere on the first of the month and you don't open QuickBooks, it doesn't generate those memorized transactions. It also doesn't automatically email those transactions for you. So I really think that's cool. Now, if it's not an invoice, you can do it on a sales receipt. And you can actually automate a sales receipt so it will automatically charge their credit card. So the fitness center, instead of doing an invoice and emailing it out, they may want to do a sales receipt and automatically charge the customer's credit card at the same time. Now, a few things to keep in mind. You've got to get permission from people before you can do that. So there's a form that they can sign. Also, the other thing that people ask a lot what about debit cards? Can I charge their bank automatically every month? And no, you can't do that yet. It's only that you can charge their credit card, not their bank account automatically. So that's something to keep in mind there. You've got the automatic emailing of reports. And this one's really cool. Let's say you want the owner of the business to stay on top of accounts receivable. And they're not really good about looking at it, things like that. What you can do is let's say you go in, you create the collections report, you customize it, you memorize it, you got it out there, then you set it up to be recurring or um, to where you want it to uh, automatically email that report to the owner of the business, let's say, every Tuesday. So the collections report, you could have it emailed automatically every Tuesday. Or maybe every month, you automatically want to email the balance sheet, the income statement, and some aging reports to the board of directors of a nonprofit. Maybe you didn't set them up to have um, reports only access, but you want to send the reports to them automatically. You set these things up and tell it to automatically email it, and then you don't have to do anything. It will automatically do it for you. And I love this, because that way they're getting the reports right in their email to take a look at that. The audit log or the activity log in QuickBooks, Des uh, QuickBooks Online is way better than the desktop version. First of all, the audit trail in the desktop only tracks changes to transactions. That's it in the desktop. Plus, if you want to find out who made all those changes on a certain day, you actually have to export it to Excel to do some advanced filtering by user over there. It's not very user friendly at all. It's kind of cumbersome. However, the one in the QuickBooks Online, the audit log, is cool. It's so amazing. It tracks everything. It tracks when people log in when they log out, when they add a new customer, when they edit and change a vendor, did they add an automatic recurring invoice, did they, uh, did they you know, go in and change some settings and preferences. It tracks everything. And it's really easy to filter and find who did what with the audit log in QuickBooks Online. Another thing you can do in QuickBooks Online is you can have multiple accounts receivable or accounts payable in one journal entry. Yes, you heard me right. <laughs> you could have more than one name for AR or AP in one journal entry. Is that exciting? Woohoo! Do you like that? Some people like that. Um, however, I think that uh, 
I think that you shouldn't be really using journal entries for AR or AP anyway. But if you want to, you have that capability. I mentioned before you could do multiple depth budgets in QuickBooks Online. You can enter service dates. So you can have on an invoice, you can have it show the service date, which may be different than the invoice date. You know, what day was the work actually performed? And as I mentioned before, you can do delayed charges in QuickBooks Online as well. These are all things that you can do in QuickBooks Online that you cannot do in the desktop version. Now let's talk about some things that are in the desktop version that are not available in QuickBooks Online. And most of these I've already mentioned, so we're just going to kind of review some of these kind of quickly. The inventory, the ability to do units of measures, groups, assemblies, and reorder points, those features are in the desktop, but they're not in QuickBooks Online. And when I say they're not in QuickBooks Online by itself, you could get a third-party app that may help you to do these things. There's third-party apps for inventory that are available out there. You just go to apps.com and look for one. Also, in the desktop, you can allocate the labor or the payroll to a particular job for the job costing. In QuickBooks Online, you can't do that. I'm very hopeful that this is something we're going to be able to do in the future, but it's not there right now. You can now have multiple templates in QuickBooks Online, but there's still more customization flexibility in the desktop version when it comes to customizing how your invoice looks and things like that. That's a little more robust in the desktop version. Um, there are some industry-specific reports that are available in the premier editions of the desktop. Now, some of those reports may look different. They may have different names. They may be, be, you may be able to get the information in a little different format from QBO. But if your client uses some of those industry-specific reports, you should check it out and go into QBO and customize reports, see if you're going to be able to get the information that they need. In QuickBooks Desktop, you can do a sales order with the Premier version. You can't do it with the Pro version, but with Premier, you can do sales orders. A sales order allows you to actually create the um, S you, you can create the invoice and the purchase order from that sales order. Now, with QuickBooks Online, you can enter an estimate. From that estimate, I can create an invoice, but from that estimate, I cannot create a purchase order. So that's a little subtle difference. So sales orders, you can use an estimate in QuickBooks Online, but the big difference there, if the client wants to create a purchase order from the estimate, you can't do that. Okay? So sales orders in QB Desktop, you can create that PO. You can't do that in QuickBooks Online. The progress invoicing we talked about previously, price levels, we mentioned that. Those two are in desktop. No good answers in QuickBooks Online. Some workarounds that may work, but they may not work. So you got to do some more investigating there. Then the lead center is in the desktop, not in QBO. And the mileage tracking is in desktop. Although it doesn't actually post anything, it just allows you to enter your mileage. There's lots of apps that are available that will actually integrate there for you. So those are some things to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is usually what you find when you're working with your clients, 80% of the clients don't use all of the features that are even in QuickBooks Pro. 80% of your clients don't use all the features that are available in QuickBooks Pro. When I asked QuickBooks one time, I asked some people at Intuit, how many people actually use all of the features in Pro? And it was something like 20%. So most of the people aren't using all of these features. I mean, think about it. Most of your clients don't use everything. A lot of them use just the very basics. However, there might be something that's a deal breaker for them. Maybe they really need to use price levels. They have multiple employees and multiple price levels for different customers, and that's very, very important to their business. In that situation, you might want to keep them in QuickBooks Desktop, or you might want to go look for a third-party app that would allow you to do that in QuickBooks Online. So and, and, uh, the other thing you've got to worry about is QuickBooks Online is being updated every single month. And so while I tell you this is what it is today, um, May 1st, here we are, um, that this is what we're doing as of May 1st. In a month from now, in three months from now, in six months from now, it may be outdated because there's monthly updates that come out every month. Who knows, maybe next month the price levels are going to be in there. So I really encourage you to subscribe to the QBO blog or my blog or other blogs to watch for the updates that come out in QBO. And you, it helps you to keep current because this stuff is changing every month. You've got to stay current to kind of keep an idea on that. Um, okay, 
So those are all some things to keep in mind. Um, Wendy asked about pushing that link. Um, I think, Wendy, if you look in the questions up above, I think you should see that link that, that Shelly had posted previously. If not, I can post that for you in just a minute. Joanna, nobody else has, have, has mentioned a problem with the audio, so hopefully that's just you. You might refresh your screen there. Um, anybody else have any questions, please type them in the question box there, and I will glance and see if I can get those questions answered for you. But let's talk about some of the third-party apps that are available, because we've been mentioning you know, some of the things where QuickBooks Online may not have it, or maybe your client just wants additional functionality in those areas. There's these third-party apps that are available that really help extend the features and the functionality of QuickBooks Online. This is where you really can make QuickBooks Online a lot more powerful. And what's amazing to me is the App Center here, apps.com, you can access it from within QBO. Over on the left navigation bar, the last the last one down there you'll see is apps. So you can get to it from there, or in any browser window, just type in apps.com. Used to be there weren't very many apps in the app store or at apps.com. Now there's hundreds and hundreds of apps. I mean, it's like, oh my goodness, they keep getting more and more every week. It seems like there's another you know, five or so apps that are added in here. And what's amazing is how many of them can just be such a huge help for your clients. This is where we really can help our clients to streamline their operations and improve how they're doing things. Talk to your clients when you're doing that needs assessment. Watch for, are there certain situations where they're doing something manually? Maybe they're writing it down in Excel. Maybe they're writing it down on a you know, clipboard or a, a notepad or whatever, where they're doing something manually and then they have to come back and enter it into QuickBooks. If they're doing things manually, they're doing double entry. This is where some of these third-party apps can help tremendously because they can enter the data once and have it fully integrate with um, QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop. If they're using the desktop version, there are some apps that will integrate with the desktop. Those are available at marketplace.intuit.com. So those are available in the marketplace. Um, but this is where talk to your clients about what pain points are, there ha are they having, where are they entering the data twice, and what, what is it that they need some additional functionality on. And this is where you can help them to implement these third-party apps. So let's say like Method CRM. CRM is Customer Relationship Management. Now Method is so much more just than CRM. CRM a lot of times is for tracking your leads, you know, and prospects, you know, especially when they're in the sales area, they're ta they'll track leads and prospects and has that converted into a customer and all that stuff. But method is so much more than that because you can really customize the screens that people are seeing and things like that. You really can expand that functionality. Maybe they need additional functionality when it comes to time sheets or time tracking. You'll see two of them shown right there, the time tracking by T-Sheets and time tracker by eBility. There's several of them that are available out there. Um, there's also another one from um, BQE, um, Bill Quick. There's several of them that you can look at if time tracking and being able to do some of the time and billing is important. Though there's several different apps for that. Under expense management, Concur, you'll see that one on there, Concur or Expensify, or there's other expense management apps where they, they can be entering their expenses out in the field or using this app from their phone, and it will fully integrate with QuickBooks Online for you. Down there in the bottom left, you barely see that little hint of green where it says Transaction Pro Importer. Let's say you've got a client that has a third-party system. Let's say it's a dentist office or a you know, medical office, and they've got some third-party billing system. Maybe you're able to get those report, to get the entries out as an Excel file or a CSV file. If there's some third-party system where you can get it as an, into a CSV, which you could open in Excel, um, but if you can get that file, Transaction Pro Importer helps you to import transactions into QuickBooks Online. It's a really cool tool. They have a TPI or Transaction Pro Importer that works with the desktop version as well. So there's lots of different apps that are available out here um, that can help extend the functionality for your clients. So you know, it's not 
it's gotten to the point now where it's not enough for us to know all the different versions of QuickBooks and the features and the functionality, but we also need to know what else is available. And so it's impossible for us to know all of the hundreds of apps that are available. But what we can know is apps.com. You know, if your client needs something, go to apps.com and do some research. Go look at that air, the apps that are available for that area or that functionality that they need. Review the information. Almost every one of these apps will have a learn more where you can watch videos, you can read FAQs or the facts on a certain one. Um, most all of them will offer a, um, a free trial where you can test it out and do some testing. Some of them even offer certification for accounting professionals, time tracking or fee sheets started a uh, certification program. Method has a certification program. So check out these apps, read the reviews, watch the videos, things like that. Be aware that they're out there so that you can help your client if they need it. The other thing that you may want to do if you haven't already is make sure you join the ProAdvisor program because it includes a lot more training and a lot more support so that you can learn more and more details about all these things. For example, in the, the regular desktop certification, I think it's module one, it gives you an overview of the different desktop versions, QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Premier, even QuickBooks Enterprise, QuickBooks Mac. What are the different features? There's a very nice chart in there that will show you the different um, functionality and which versions it's in. We've got the same kind of training for QuickBooks Online, where you can learn more details about QuickBooks Online. So there's two different ProAdvisor programs. There's one that's a paid ProAdvisor program, which includes free software, which is the desktop software and QuickBooks Online. So you get QuickBooks Accountant and you get QuickBooks Online Accountant. So the desktop or the paid software, the, let me start over. The paid ProAdvisor program includes the software for the desktop, the training for the desktop, certification for the desktop, support for the desktop, and all of that for QuickBooks Online. The free ProAdvisor program is QuickBooks Online stuff only. The training, the certification, the support for QuickBooks Online only. So if you go to ProAdvisor.com, you're going to see two options, the paid option or the free option. The paid option is desktop and online. The free option is online only. Once you get certified, then you're listed on that Find a ProAdvisor website, and that's a great source of referral. So I encourage you to do that. I also encourage you to earn the advanced certification because that helps you get listed higher on the Find a ProAdvisor website. Okay, so go check some of those things out. Um, and if you have some questions about some of that, please type them in there. If you have questions about anything, that we've been covering. Please type your questions in for me. Um, another thing I want to ask you guys to do is join me at the QuickBooks Connect conference. This is a great conference. Did any of you go last year? Did you go to QB Connect last year? It was awesome. There was You have a, a combination of accounting professionals, you've got developers, and you've also got small business owners. So Intuit is bringing us all together and allowing us to connect with one another at QuickBooks Connect. They had trained there, they did a concert for us, and it was awesome training and stuff all day long and networking events and concerts at night, so it was really great. It's going to be November 2nd through the 4th in the San Jose Convention Center in California. So if you can attend that, I encourage you to register. Go ahead and sign up to be notified um, when the registration opens. You can sign up and, and get more information at QBCon2015.com. QBCon2015.com. So go ahead and sign up for some of that, and then um, that would be fabulous. Okay, Q&A. You guys need to type some more questions in there for me. Um, go ahead and give me some of your questions. And those of you that are wanting CPE, you guys have been too quiet today. You haven't asked very many questions. So we've got to make sure we keep you on here for at least 50 minutes. Don't log out early. So I'm going to hold off on giving you that CPE pullover question in just a minute. What questions do you all have? We had a really good question earlier about the hair salon. What other questions do you guys have? Or do you just want me to keep talking and you listen? I would rather have your questions if it were me. So type your questions in there. And let me go back and look and see if I have some other questions here. Uh, let's see. 
let's see. Okay, it looks like I've answered most of your questions. What other questions do you all have? Oh, thank you, Wendy. She said wonderful presentation. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. One of the things I will encourage you guys to do as you're learning more about this, and let me put this in the chat box. I'll reply to Wendy because I got it right there, um, is go into the test drive for QBO because it may be new to some of you. So go ahead and go into the test drive for QBO and um, play around with it and get familiar with it and see what it can do and stuff like that. And Wendy, thank you. She asked, how is sales tax handled in QBO? It can do, QBO can do sales taxes for you um, and you can set up multiple sales taxes like different cities, you know, if you have different sales tax rates. One of the things I will caution you on, whether you're working with the desktop or QuickBooks Online, um, sales taxes can get really complex really quickly. I never realized, let's say you have a street and you have three houses in a row, the middle house could have a different tax rate than the two houses next to it for sales tax purposes. Really? The sales tax map, when you look at the map, it's not like this whole street is, you know, this certain sales tax. It's really kind of crazy because it's, it's like a house-by-house house basis. The sales tax maps are crazy. The other thing that's crazy is in some states, let's say um, you've got, a, you got a, a client that's selling a candy, like a convenience store or something. A Hershey bar by itself might be classified as candy, which is taxed at one rate. But on the other hand, if the Hershey bar has almonds in it, it might be classified as food, which is a different tax rate. Or in some places, toothpaste. If it's regular toothpaste, it's one tax rate. If it's fluoride toothpaste, it's a different tax rate. Oh my gosh, could they get any more complex? <laughs> so if you have clients that have a lot of sales taxes, I encourage you to check out something called AVA tax, AVA tax from Avalara. Avalara is A-V-A-L-A-R-A, -A -A, Avalara. Hope I got it spelled right. They have an app that will integrate with both desktop and online that will help streamline the taxes when it comes to sales taxes. You don't want a client to get a sales tax audit and have to pay lots and lots of back taxes. So I encourage you, if you've got clients that got some complex tax issues, definitely check out Avalara or Avatax from them. But QBO can do basic sales taxes. If you're getting too complex, I would, I would definitely then consider that Avatax. Um, and somebody asked me to post that link again. I posted it just a second ago. You should be able to see that. The HT, it's qbo.intuit.com slash redirect test drive. I shared that with everybody, so you should be able to see that test drive link. Um, somebody says, my client's bank data only auto-downloads once a week. How can I change this to daily? Stacey, are you using um, the desktop or online? Because in online, it should be updating every night. Do you actually have transactions that are clearing every day because sometimes they may not have something every single day. If they don't have too much activity, you may not have that. Um, Shelly says, how about talking about the unapplied income account? So Shelly, where people usually get into trouble with the unapplied income is when they're downloading transactions, let's say it was a deposit in your bank, and they just click to add it and they don't select where it should go. Um, so you may have some unapplied income there. Um, Oh, so Tiffany said she's using the iPad and she didn't see the link. Tiffany, click on the question box, and I think you should be able to see those, um, the questions and the answers on the little question box. She's got it now. Very good. Thank you. Um, you need to make sure that you don't have Nexus in that state though, through any license or something like that. You're right, Joanna. You've got to worry about Nexus in a state. And up there in Oregon and Washington, and maybe... Um, I saw Shelley and some of you others that are up in that area. One of your states, I can't remember which is which, does not have any sales taxes. And there was a mattress company. Let's say the mattress company was in Oregon and a customer lived in Washington and they bought the, so they bought the mattress in Oregon, but then the mattress was delivered and set up in Washington. And I may have my states backwards. It might be vice versa. Um, but what happened was the mattress company was not collecting sales taxes because it was delivered out of state. The customer's from out of state. That means it's not taxable, right? The problem was when they delivered it and had it set up in the other state, 
that created Nexus. They owed millions of dollars in back taxes, and that mattress company went out of business. Just Google mattress sales taxes Washington or Oregon, and you'll find the whole story on that. So it, it is a very touchy area where some small businesses are, you know, they lost their whole business. They are out of business now because of that. Um, so make sure that you, you know, if you've got a client that's doing any kind of business across state line, you get some help and you find out about that. Um, okay, there's our little learning objectives. Oh, I've, I don't know why I'm going through my slides. I need to launch the poll question. Here we go. Okay, so those of you that need your CPE keyword, here you go. We'll go ahead and answer that poll question for me. Um, and uh, Shelly wants to know, how does QBO deal with unapplied payments on a cash basis P&L? Um, I believe it's included as income, Shelly. I would have to double check on that. It's covered in one of the modules in the QBO Advanced Certification, and that was months ago, and I cannot remember the details but I thought it, it was included on the cash basis P&L, um, but I can't remember. So look in module four. Thank you, Sina. <laughs> She's gone through it. Um, so go look in module four in the QBO advanced training materials. And you don't have to have three years of, of certifications to be able to access that. You just need to be certified in QuickBooks Online, and then you can access the advanced training materials. So remember, you can join the ProAdvisor program, the, the online part of it, for free. You can go through and do the QBO certification for free. There's webinars, four-hour webinars that are live and, and weekly webinars that are going on all the time. Look at Intuit Academy for some of those. Um, but then look at the Advanced Cert Module 4. Thank you for that, um, Sita. A little help there on which module it was in. Gosh, I spent so much time on that, it's hard to believe I could forget any of it, right? <laughs> but I do. Okay, any other questions that you guys have? Um, Shelly says, clearly I need to get my advanced cert. Absolutely, Shelly. Go get that advanced certification. It doesn't take as long as the desktop version, I don't think. Um, to get the advanced certification for QuickBooks Online. Um, but I would encourage you to do that. Um, okay, other questions that we might have. It looks like, let me see how you guys are doing on answering that poll question. We've got 93% of you voted, and it's been open for two minutes. So if you need CPE, this is your last call. Last call to answer that CPE poll question if you need that. Okay, great overview. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Larry. Thank you guys all. I hope you guys will also consider joining me next week for the Ultimate Accounting VCon. We have two days jam-packed. Also, listen up. Sandy Smith and I, Sandy smith Lave and I have created a contest. You could win $1,000. Go to accountingvcon.com, and we've created a contest for top service provider for various accountants and bookkeepers, um, you submit some things that you've learned from either Sandy or myself that have helped you provide great service to your clients. And we've got some cash prizes, top prizes, $1,000 cash. So go to accountingvcon.com, and on the right side of that website, you'll, you'll see something about the contest, and you can click on um, learn more or something like that. So go in there and check that information out, and uh, join me and her for the Accounting Vcon next week, two days of jam-packed information. Love to have you for that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close that poll question. We did get somebody else to answer, so I'm glad you made it in there for that. And do we have any other last-minute questions that you all might have? Well, thank you, Shelly. Shelly said I should post the Vcon links on the webinar, Accounting Vcon. Dot com. You're right, I should have put them on the slides, but I didn't. So thank you, Shelly. Thank you guys for joining us. Hopefully this helped you to understand a little bit more about the different QuickBooks versions and additions and what's available and help you to kind of decide which ones would be right for your clients. Um, if we don't have any more questions, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Intuit and Wendy, and I uh, hope everybody has a great day. Thank you all.